Welcome to Unlocking Science. Our goal is to glorify God by studying and unlocking the secrets of His amazing creation. I'm your host, Mr. P, and today we're going to be talking about metamorphosis. So this is the big science word of the day that we're going to talk about in lots of detail, but really focused on what you might think of as metamorphosis in a caterpillar changing into a butterfly. So I'm joined today by Mr. Ron Dudek. He's going to talk through some of these things with us, help us understand about how uh, caterpillars change into butterflies and all of the different aspects there. Now, when we say the word metamorphosis, we could break that down into two basic parts. The word meta means to change and morphe means form. So when something goes through metamorphosis, it changes form. So we can use this in lots of different contexts in science. So take Claude here. Claude is a lot like a caterpillar because he has an exoskeleton on the outside. He's an arthropod like insects are as well. He's got this hard exoskeleton on the outside. So if the insides of him grow bigger, he runs into that shell and he has to undergo a process we call molting. He peels off the outside of a shell, a new softer shell grows up in underneath, and we get a new exoskeleton formed on the outside. It's the exact opposite of the way your body works with those hard bones on the inside. You have an endoskeleton. So let's go ahead and jump into your presentation and help us understand how those caterpillars change into butterflies. Okay, well let's take a look at what we call insect university. We have a little background on insects. And you look at the screen now, you see all these different insects, you know, the the scientists or entomologists that study insects put the number of species well over a million. But whether you're looking at that little itty bitty ant, or it could be a big bumpy beetle, or this wacky walking stick, or even a daredevil dragonfly, one thing all of those different looking insects have in common is they start life as an egg. And uh, some insects will lay their eggs one at a time, and others will lay them in groups called clusters. Well, again, another thing all of those insects have in common, aside from coming from an egg, is they all have the same three body parts. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the very first part would be the head, and we're going to look at a butterfly, right? That's an easy one. The next part here, this one gets people sometimes, uh, is called the thorax, and the last part is called the abdomen. And all insects have all three of those body parts. Now, on the abdomen of every insect, there are going to be six legs. That's one of the ways we classify insects. So when we look at a caterpillar, I like to ask the question, is that an insect? Because it doesn't look like it has six legs. But this one will fool you. There's the head. There's the thorax. There's the abdomen. And those are the true legs. Those are the six little pointy legs, and those are going to become the legs of the butterfly when it goes through metamorphosis. But caterpillars will have eight or ten of these pro legs on the back end, and those are just temporary legs for a while it's a caterpillar. And they use them kind of interestingly. There's the pro legs, there's the pads wrapping around a stick, and they have these little hooks called crochet hooks. And uh, they use them to navigate on leaves and plants, and they come in quite handy because they stick quite well. But this is not going to be this critter's lifestyle for the rest of its life. Things are going to change. So as Roger said, our big word for today is metamorphosis. Very simply put, means change. So we've got three basic types of metamorphosis. And if you look at this insect here, that's a silverfish, which you never want to see in your house because they eat the cushions on your furniture. Uh, A silverfish, when it hatches from its egg, looks basically identical to the adult And the only thing that happens as it grows uh, is it gets larger. And uh, there's no real apparent change in the shape. So we call that no metamorphosis. Or if you're a little bit geeky, you can call it ametabolis. But there's no metamorphosis in that type insect. And there's not very many that have this type. The second type of metamorphosis might be like with your grasshoppers. Uh, And when they hatch from an egg, they look quite a bit like the adult. But they're missing some things. They don't have wings, so as they mature, they have to gain wings and ovipositors to lay eggs. And so insects like this that start out looking a lot like the parent, but have to gain wings and ovipositors, um, we were going to say this is um, incomplete metamorphosis. 
in that middle stage we call a nymph. That's that little the stage that comes in between. So the nymph looks a lot like the adult. A lot like the adult. In the incomplete metamorphosis. And again, there aren't a large number of insects like that. The largest number of insects are going to uh, uh, go through their metamorphosis like this next one. And this is really the most exciting, I think, of the, of the group. Um, we have our egg. We then have our caterpillar or larva. We then have our... It's late. Chrysalis, and then lastly, we have our adult. And if you take a look at the adult and the caterpillar, you would never know they were of the same creature. But if you came here from outer space, another planet, you'd never guess they were from the same animal at all, the same insect whatsoever. That's called complete metamorphosis, or what we'll call a total change. The juvenile or the young one does not look anything like the adult. Well, let's skip a few slides here. Hang on, we're going to move forward here. <laughs> All right, going into the uh, alien here, not understanding what he was be looking at. All right, let's look at the uh, monarch caterpillar here. Monarch caterpillars, when they first hatch from their egg, very tiny. Uh, you'll notice there's only two colors on the screen there, white and black. And over a period of just two weeks, what's going to happen to this tiny little caterpillar it's going to grow 3,000 times larger, and it's going to gain some new colors. Now, when I say the term 3,000 times larger, just to give you some perspective, imagine a human baby comes home from the hospital somewhere near 8 pounds. Imagine this, if in the span of two weeks, it got 3,000 times larger, that would be the equivalent of a human baby growing to the size of two elephants in just two weeks. It's kind of an astonishing growth when you think about now, that. Now, I've grown a lot since I was a baby, but not quite that much. <laughs> so here's how they do that. How do you get a, an insect to grow that fast, that large? And so here is a monarch caterpillar coming out of its egg. And what it's doing right there is it's eating its way out of the egg. That's the very first meal that it has. And what this little critter wants to do is eat. It's a little eating machine. So the first thing, it'll, it'll consume that egg, and then what it's going to do is it's going to consume all the leaf material around it. And uh, here are two larger monarch caterpillars. And um, sometimes if you put your ear up real close to monarch caterpillars feeding on this milkweed plant, it sounds just like somebody nibbling on a corn cob. You can actually hear the little slice and chew. Chunk, slice chunk, and chew. Chunk, chunk. Slice yep, they're and munching chew. right through there. And they do that almost nonstop for two weeks. It's an amazing process. Now, I like to eat hot dogs. I mean, we've got Memorial Day coming up, but think about this. If I sat down and for two weeks ate nothing but hot dogs almost nonstop, I might look like this in my outside silhouette here. But over the period of two weeks, what's going to happen is something like that. My skin's going to have to stretch to make room for all the weight that I'm gaining. Now, our skin can stretch a little bit like that to put on a few pounds over two weeks. But one thing that wouldn't change is our endoskeleton, the internal part. That's the hard parts of us. Well, we wear our skeleton on the inside, and as Roger had mentioned, all insects wear their skeleton on the outside. Kind of like a knight suit of armor, or if you're a fan of Marvel Comics, kind of like Iron Man. It's a protective outer coating. And you think about that, these are all hard insects, hard exoskeleton. When you look at a caterpillar, that's an exoskeleton, but it's not hard like that on a beetle. Um, so it wouldn't be like that. This, this uh, night suit, think of it more like the rubber scuba diving suit on a scuba diver. And so when you think of just the monarch, they have to go through five stages. These are called instars. And every so many days after gobbling down plant material, they've got to get rid of the old one and get a new one. So as Roger said, they will molt and shed the old exoskeleton. So there's the egg, and you see each individual stage. Now think of this one stage here. It's like being born with a rubber wetsuit. Well, if I eat all those hot dogs, that wetsuit might stretch so far, but guess what? It's not going to go the distance. So we have to remove that wetsuit and get a new one, and that's what the caterpillar is doing every three or four days. It's removing the complete outer coating and growing a brand new one from underneath. Now the monarch will do that five times during its... A life cycle as a larva or a caterpillar. 
Now, here's how that looks. It's absolutely amazing. So here is a, a caterpillar that has gorged itself on plant material. The exoskeleton no longer fits, and it is ready to shed that old skin. So this is the, they're called anal pro legs. They're hanging onto the leaf there, and now it's ready to crawl out of the old exoskeleton. A brand new one has grown beneath that. Very complex of chemicals has taken place that orchestrate this whole thing. So here goes our caterpillar. Look, it's crawling out of the old exoskeleton. Now it's hooked right there. So it's kind of just wriggling and slithering right out of that old suit. Now look, just like an old suit. Now watch down here by its head right there. Now what's this? Well, that is the exoskeleton that covered the body part of it, and that's basically the head capsule over the head. That came off almost like a, like a space helmet. Popped his helmet Popped right it. off. And it'll turn and eat both of those, and then go right back to eating the plants again. Well, after it does that five times, it's going to go to the next stage. And in the next stage, what it's going to do is, rather than sitting on top of a leaf and crawling out of its uh, exoskeleton, it's going to go under a leaf or a twig, and here's the head, the face only a mother can love, right, of a monarch caterpillar. It's got something right there called a spinneret, and using that spinneret, it's going to spin what's called a silk pad or a silk button under there, and they're very meticulous. I've watched them do this for hours, and it's just circling around, and it's extending it out, and it's very sticky. And then once it finishes that, it's going to have to latch onto that. So what it does is it crawls up backwards, and using those fi final pro legs, it hangs onto the back and falls into the J shape. And again, we've watched this numerous times, and it's very exciting because over the span of several hours, it's, it starts pulsating. Inside, all these dramatic chemical changes, highly complex, are taking place. And at the end of several hours, what's going to happen is it drops out of the J, and we're going to want to keep an eye right there. It's going to split the exoskeleton behind the head. And here's what that looks like. I see it's looking like a green gorilla face. But that right there is the next exoskeleton, which is the chrysalis. And it's beginning to split up the back. We've had our grandkids over watching this. They get so excited. They're, I mean, you, you just can't get enough of it. It, it. It's squirming and pulsating. And by the way, you're going to see these holes here, right? There's a hole. And if you watch closely, it's actually opening and closing. Those are the spiracles on the thorax and abdomen. That's how the chrysalis is breathing. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work to get out of your old exoskeleton. So this chrysalis is pumping and puffing. And you see them opening and closing as we now work our way up. So here you can see we're hooked onto the silk button right there. And I, we have to add a little drama over here because this to me is one of the most exciting things in all of creation because right here our beautiful caterpillar, right, which is going to become an even more beautiful monarch butterfly is in mortal danger right here and here is why. All right, if you look right there, there's the silk button, and there is the old exoskeleton, which is hooked on to that silk button. This chrysalis is about to discard the old exoskeleton. And uh, what's going to happen if the chrysalis lets go of that old exoskeleton? It's going to fall, and it's going to splat, and it's very soft at this time. The result is not pretty. So I like to describe this. We need a superhero in the story right here. If you ever think of old Lois Lane hanging on the side of the, uh, of the Daily Planet building, ready to drop to her death, right? That's Something, a Superman reference right. for, for Somebody's got to save her. Kids. In this next clip, here comes the, the superhero of, the, of this whole thing. And I was shown this by, by a fellow that runs a nature center, and he was excited about it. And when he, when, when he got excited about it, boy, did I get excited about it. That little stick-like structure there is called the chromaster. And it is the hero of the story because right before 
the chrysalis is going to let go of the old exoskeleton and that chromaster is going to appear and save the day. So I would say, look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's the chromaster. Now watch. Here, the chromaster is going to pop out right there. And now it's reaching up over the old exoskeleton and it plunges into the silk button. And only when the chromaster has a firm grip on that silk button do the hold fast tubercles on the old chrysalis let go of that. And you think about that from an evolutionary standpoint. How does this critter know it needs that? That's a pretty lucky thing it's to a develop pretty lucky in your thing. life cycle. And not to mention that, look at the design of the chromaster here. This is an electron microscopy of the tip. It's covered with these little hooks, just happen to be called crochet hooks. And there is the silk, and they stick in there, and they get tangled up. And there's the hooks, and there's the silk. And look, you can see a real close-up here how it wraps around those little hooks. So that would look very similar to the way we've imitated a design like this in Velcro. Oh, like that up on the screen there. Yeah. <laughs> like that. And uh, very much like Velcro. Absolutely amazing. So we've imitated God's design from cockleburrs and, and structures like this to make that product we call Velcro. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that is, I, I look at that, I can't, that's one of my favorite parts of the process when we watch it at home is that process. Here comes the cremaster, everybody. <laughs> well, the chrysalis then will gyrate, and what, the reason why it does that, we think that gets more of the hooks into the silk. The more it gyrates, you get a better grip on it, and now you're seeing a little bit of pulsating taking place. And uh, over the period of several hours, it will harden up. And we don't know why the, the chrysalis and the monarch has these gold trim. It just seems sometimes for decoration. But when you think about it, the chrysalis becomes a type of coffin. Because what's going to happen inside is absolutely amazing. The entire animal basically breaks down. If you were to split it open, it looks like green greens. pudding. Yeah, it's not, it's not <laughs> green pleasant. Green snot, if that's what you were wanting to say. <laughs> um, you think about this. We have these, the caterpillar only has these little light sensitive spots on its head there. It does not have good vision whatsoever. Uh, those are going to be converted to these massive uh, eyes down here that have you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cells, uh, these compound lenses. And what's happening in here, there are cell populations inside the caterpillar called imaginal disks. They're like computer programs that are turned off for the entire life of the caterpillar. During this phase, they switch on and they take over the process. And as this programmed cell death inside the caterpillar's body takes place, I mean deliberate breaking down of its own tissues, the imaginal disc direct that then to be used to create new structures like eyes and wings and different legs. And I like to compare it to like a symphony, all being orchestrated by the imaginal discs, just telling everything what to do and how to do it. It'll stay green for about nine days. And on about the ninth day, the exterior of the chrysalis then becomes translucent or clear, and you can see what's inside of it. And now you can see the wings of the monarch butterfly. And on about day 10, it'll start pumping up its wings. And here's what that looks like. Now, it'll crack the X, this uh, chrysalis along these lines. And here comes our beautiful butterfly now little hooks on the ends of its legs to hold in place and you're seeing the head pump right here and what that's doing there's extra fluid in the abdomen here hemolymph that it's pumping in through these veins into the wings to cause the wings to expand and then several hours later it'll sun itself it'll exercise brand new muscles that it did not have as a caterpillar and without ever having taken a flying lesson right <laughs> take off and uh, again, the, the monarch caterpillars in this part of Northern America, uh, they will feed in this particular area. They'll probably breed once or, once or twice more. And then there's another generation that will head down to uh, Mexico. But what's really fascinating, the monarchs that you're seeing here in Kentucky early in spring, they're only going to live four weeks. Mm -hmm. The monarchs that you see heading back to Mexico in October, they're going to live up to nine months. Yeah, so they'll migrate 
far south over winter in the warmer climates and then come back come and they'll back. be the first ones to lay their eggs in the spring and they lay their eggs in you know like southern texas mm -hmm. and then and the process starts the plant again. that they lay their eggs mm -hmm. on for monarchs is very specific they look for the milkweed plant and so if you want to find caterpillar monarch caterpillar mm -hmm. eggs the milkweed plant is the place you go to look for those things mm -hmm. And uh, they will only eat milkweed, which is another amazing thing because the monarch mother, she's got to know what plant to look for. And now we, that she can sense that by sense of smell through her antenna. They have the shape of the leaf in, brain, you know, in their brain. You know, it's like a computer program. They, they know which shape of leaf they're looking for. And then they'll even land on the leaf and the mothers will scratch it with their feet. Mm -hmm. It's called drumming and they can taste it. Yeah, the chemicals in there are, are sensed through little receptors in their feet, and they can use their antenna that stirs up those chemicals as well. It's an amazing process. So to think of all of these things as a random evolutionary process, there's no way that all of these complex details that are all integrated together in these intricate ways could happen by chance. And this is another extremely obvious example to me oh, yeah. of how God has designed these things. And all of that programming that we find is present in the DNA inside that first egg cell. And mm -hmm. it tells the caterpillar how to form all of these different instar stages, all these different structures, the dissolving and the reformation mm -hmm. from the imaginal disks. All of that is orchestrated, as you mentioned, by the DNA in that sequence. And that code is something that God's given these creatures from the very beginning. Hmm. And I know some of you folks at home are probably you know, growing, you know, doing it where you do the life cycle, you get some caterpillars, you watch them. Sure, you them can order them from catalogs yeah. and things. And, and uh, it's fun. We watch that certain caterpillars have personalities. <laughs> there are braver caterpillars and little more finicky ones, but we have a lot of fun with it. You know, one of the great Bible lessons that comes out of this uh, I'm a big fan of the Blue Letter Bible. I, I don't make any money for this. I'm not advertising for them, but I use it. Great online resource. Great online mm -hmm. resource. Uh, if you go to the Blue Letter Bible, uh, you will discover that the word metamorphosis is found in our New Testaments. Uh, and it, it, you can even pronounce it online if you don't know how to say it. Metamorpho, oh, right there. And it'll tell you what the meanings of that word are. And there are several times it appears in the New Testament. But... Um, Think of it like this. 1 Peter 2.2 2 tells us, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. And I think of the caterpillar feeding on that material for, for, for two weeks straight. That's the way they grow. Well, if we want to grow as Christians, we need to feed on God's word that way. And we see in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And again, we're going to have a total change. Romans 12, 2, you know, therefore, right? Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it's through this process, digesting God's word, and God will change you from the inside out. That's mm -hmm. one of the great truths I get from this. Yeah. So we can use, again, as, many, as often as possible, we want to bring these scientific principles back to glorify God and then connect them to the gospel truths. And so just as we are born dead in sin and trespasses, as we read in Ephesians 1 and 2, we need to be made alive in Christ by repenting and trusting in Him. And we hope that that's something you will all consider as you think about the butterfly and the transformation that it goes that it goes from one type of creature into an entirely another. We are a new creation in Christ, and that is what we all need to experience to have eternal life. All right, we hope you learned a little bit about butterflies. We hope you'll have the chance to maybe order one of these egg kits and watch them grow. And until we see you next time, get out and explore God's amazing creation.